Hello once again, this is Jennifer McGuire, and I hope your week is off to a great start. Today I'm going to talk about alcohol-based markers, in particular the all-to-new artist markers. There are a few different alcohol-based markers out there, and I've tried most of them. And after lots of experimenting, I really wanted to share more about the all-to-new artist markers, as I think they're a really great option that has a great price point. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the markers, share some new inks from all to new also, and then I'm going to show you how I like to use these markers to create different looks. So let's start by looking closer at the markers and what makes them special. There are certain things about these particular markers that make them stand out as a good option for crafters who like to color like me and aren't really looking for professional results. So let's start by taking a closer look at the markers themselves. These are alcohol-based markers, which allow for the blending of color and smooth results. Currently, I believe there are 48 colors available, but more will be coming out in the future. You can get these in sets of four or in sets of 12, which I'll talk about soon. But the nice thing is you can get these in color families. So sets of four markers that go together well for nice blending. Now, one of my favorite things about these markers is there are two tips. You have the fine tip on one end and the brush tip on the other. These are the two type of tips that I like to use the most, and I love that they're both included on this pen. The pen itself is very comfortable to hold, and it is designed so it doesn't roll around on your table. The end that has the fine tip has a little gray marker underneath the cap, as you can see here, so you know which end has the fine tip. On the side of the marker, you can see the color code for the particular color and also the name of the color, which matches up with an ink that Altenew has. And I'll show more about that in a moment. The brush tip itself isn't actually a brush. It's just that shape and it applies very smoothly and is very similar to other brush tip markers that I've used. I find that both of the tips seem very durable, so I don't have to worry about them getting damaged over time. There's also a colorless blender pen available. That's what I'm using here. This almost removes color or moves it. So you can see it looks like I'm erasing the color from the center of that pink area. I often use my colorless blender pen to remove any color that I get outside of the lines. So the fact that this has a fine tip is very helpful for that. Before we start looking at the different colors available, I wanted to mention that there are refills available for all the colors of Alta New Artist Markers. I just ordered the set of refills so they would have them on hand, but I find that these have lasted a while. I've used them for a long time now and have needed to do a refill, but they are available, which I think is very important when using alcohol-based markers. And plus, you can use those refills to do fun alcohol ink backgrounds if you want to. Okay, it's time to talk about color. And the greatest thing about the Alta New Artist Markers is that they're available in color families, four like you see here. And this takes the guesswork out of which colors blend together nicely. And it is such a time saver. So you can see here in this color family, there's a light, medium, dark, and extra dark. I know that I can take these and they will blend together beautifully. That is really important for someone like me who struggles sometimes with color blending. So, so far I've shared two of my favorite things about these markers. One is that they have the brush and the fine tip. And the other is that they come in color families that takes the guesswork out for me. So here are those pink markers I just showed you. You can see the four colors. And the four colors there, the Rose Quartz, Puffy Heart, Purple Wine, and Cosmic Berry, those are actually ink colors Altenu has too. So I know that my colored markers will match my inks. That's another great perk. And another thing that I like about these markers is that the color on the caps of the markers are actually very close to the actual color of the marker inside. Sometimes that's frustrating to me, but in this case, I know that the color is very close. Let's next look at the different color families available. As I mentioned, these markers are available in sets of four, or sets of 12. The sets of four are simply a color family, so a light, medium, dark, and extra dark. The sets of 12 have three different color families included. So on this sheet you see here, these are the colors included in set A. 
So it just depends on how you want to try out the colors, whether you just want to do a small color family or a set of three color families. And I think it's worth mentioning again that you can see there's a light, medium, dark, and extra dark of the marker. And you'll have a matching ink pad in a light, medium, dark, and extra dark. That's one of my favorite things about all to new ink pads. And now we've got the markers to match. The color names are the same, so it takes out all of the guesswork. Okay, let's look at another set. This is set B. You can again get these in the individual sets of four or these 12 all together. I am impressed that Altenew seems to have captured a lot of the colors that are needed for coloring. So there's a good mix available already, but they will be adding more colors in the future. Here we have the artist marker set C. There are two fa color families included in this. And then also four random colors that just kind of complete everything. Here we have artist marker set D. This includes these three color families. And that seashore set on the bottom, absolutely my favorite color of pool alcohol-based markers ever. In the middle there are some colors that are great for skin tones. I like to use those and team them up with the blush color that I showed you earlier. So I do like that there are some beautiful skin tones included in the artist markers that are already available. Next up, we have Artist Marker Set E. This includes some bright oranges, warm grays, and some beautiful greens. I like that there are already two green color families available so that you can get a different look depending on what you're coloring. And so far, there is one more set of 12 available, and this is the Artist Marker's Primary Essential Set. So these aren't actually colors that are meant to blend together, but are just basic colors. So if you're looking for great quality markers that you can color without seeing scribble lines, this is a good set for you. But keep in mind that the colors in this set are also included in other sets. Now before we start using those markers, I wanted to show you the newest Altenew ink pads. Now, if you've watched my videos, you know I'm a fan of their inks because the colors are beautiful and they are available in sets of light, medium, dark, and extra dark so I know which match together. Well, here are the newest color sets. In this case, there's actually two sets of four, the top one and then the blue in the middle, and then two sets of three, so we have the greens and the pinks. These colors are gorgeous, and I'll be using them for several of my examples today. Now, I really wanted to show you a comparison between these colors and previous alternate colors, but you won't believe this. I lost my entire set of ink swatches of Altenew inks. After crying for about seven hours, I decided I'll remake them and share them in a future video, but do know they make a nice addition to the existing colors. Okay, I'll share a bit more information about these markers as we create, but I thought we'd go ahead and jump into some stamping and card making. My first two examples use the new Altenew wallpaper stamp set. I thought these large flowers were perfect for demonstrating coloring. Before we start stamping, I did want to mention that this stamp set also has a coordinating mask set available. That's what you see here to the right. It's a stencil set with masks that are perfect for using along with the stamp set. And there are also coordinating dies available, which I'll be using today. Included with the stamp set is this little booklet that has lots of examples, color suggestions, and also stamp sets that go with it nicely. I really like that Altenew is doing this. All right, let's do some coloring. I'm actually going to color two flowers to show you two different ways that I like to use these markers. So I went ahead and I stamped the leaves from that stamp set that I just showed you with the permanent black ink. And now I'm coloring them in with some of the green artist markers. The first method for coloring that I like to use is to color solid first with the lightest color in the color family. I then go into the area where I want a little bit of darker color and I apply color with the medium shade, so the next darkest shade. Then I come in with the dark shade, so it's the third one in the color family, and add that to it. And then I do everything in reverse order to make sure that it blends. In this case, I'm only using three colors. That's usually all I really need. But I like that the color family includes four, so that if you want to go a bit darker, you can, or if you want lighter, you can. This method of starting with the light, then going to the dark, and then going from dark back to light 
is what I usually use when I'm coloring with alcohol-based markers. Another way that you can do this is to start with your darkest first and then work your way to the light. So here I started with the darkest and now I'm coming in with the dark. Then I'll come in with the medium and then come to the light. Now everybody is a little bit different in how they like to blend colors, so I encourage you to try both ways and decide what works best for you. For this flower, I decided to use all four markers in the color family since the image is so big and you can see the fun blending that you get. Now if you've watched my videos in the past, you know that I like to use Copic markers. Copic markers are the professional quality alcohol-based markers, what many professionals use, and they color like a dream. However, I know that it's a high price point for many people, and the price has increased significantly lately. So I felt it was important to share these markers to let you know that there is an affordable option. The price point on these markers is significantly lower, and there are less markers available. If you already have Copic markers or other alcohol-based markers, you're probably good to go. I got these so that I could try them out as an affordable option and I have to say I have been really impressed and will be using these in future videos. Each of the markers have different positive things about them, but I wanted to share these as a great option for crafters. They're affordable, they come in great color families, they match their inks, they really provide a lot of what we need. Before we move on to another coloring technique, I wanted to mention that you can do the tip-to-tip -tip technique that is very common with alcohol-based markers. Say you have two colors that you want to blend better. You take the lighter color and touch it to the darker marker tip to pick up a little bit of that darker color and then add it to your paper. This technique is something that's safe to do with alcohol-based markers. It won't ruin your tips. But keep in mind, if you need to ever replace any of your tips, Altenew does have replacements available. Okay, now I wanted to show you my favorite way to actually color with the Altenew Artist Markers. When doing a lot of experimenting, I found that I really like the results with this technique. This is feathering or flicking. Now, you forgive me, I am not a coloring expert in any way. But I found that if I applied the lightest color first to color in my image solid and then applied a flicking or feathering motion with the brush tip or the fine tip, I could create a really beautiful looking image. So here you can see how I started with the light color. I'm coming in with the medium color. And I'm not really worrying so much about blending. I want that look of texture like you can see in the leaf that is already done there. Because of the two tip options on this marker, I can do this technique very easily. So you'll probably be seeing me color this way a lot in future videos. But I encourage you to experiment with the different ways of coloring and decide what works for you. Now if you are curious about these markers, the nice thing is you could buy one set of four markers to try. In that set would be a color family, so you can test out the blending and see if it's a type of marker that you would like. Keep in mind, in the rest of this video, I have other ways to use these markers, so you might find that it's something worth investing in. I have tried other lower-priced alcohol-based markers, and I found that I didn't get great results with them. They may work for some people, but for me, I find that I get the best results with the Altenew Artist Markers or Copic Markers. Before moving on to some more ideas for these markers, let's create the cards with the images that I just stamped, colored, and die cut. Now I'm adding these on to a four by five and a quarter inch piece of white cardstock using Altenew adhesive. This is a great adhesive that I can either use to glue things onto my card for good, or I can put a little bit on the back of an image and I'll have some flexibility to move it around until I'm happy with the results. Once I'm happy with the results, I can add more of the adhesive or put some liquid adhesive behind the images to hold them securely. I wanted to add the flower with some dimension, so I used the matching coordinating die to die cut from white craft foam, and I glued that to the back of our stamped flower. Before I adhere that, I decided to cut up one of my leaf images, so I could take some of the leaves that were hidden behind the flower and move them so they're peeking out from the flower. That Altenew adhesive allows me to move things, and I find that to be a great advantage when I am putting a card together because I move things around a lot. 
once I have everything in place, I can press everything down and I can be sure that the pieces will stay put when it goes through the mail. For sentiment on this one, I needed something small to fit on the top right, but I wanted it to be somewhat bold. So I used the older Altenew Inked Roses stamp set. You can see the words, thank you up there. I actually cut that stamp apart so that I could stack the word thank you and it would fit nicely into the opening I have on my card. I then added all of that to a peach color note card that I created that is four and a quarter by five and a half. Notice that my images are hanging off the side. I could trim those down to put into a smaller envelope, but I love that they're hanging off. So I'll just mail this card in a five by seven envelope. I like having that option. You can see here the coloring that I got by doing that flicking or feathering method and how I was able to really easily find the colors that blend together well because I used a color family of Altenew Artist Markers. My next card uses the images that I colored using the typical alcohol-based marker blending techniques. In this case, I made a background using the new Altenew One Day at a Time stamp set. This is a really unique stamp set that has four marbled looking images and some encouragement sentiments on the bottom. There are many ways you can use these images and the little guide that comes with the stamp set shows some of those. You can actually layer the marbled images, but I decided to just stamp them individually to create a tiled look on the background of my card. I have a piece of white cardstock that is four by five and a quarter, and I'm using my Misty stamping tool to stamp the marble images. I've positioned them so there's a little bit of a gap between each. You don't need to use a stamping tool. You could definitely use an acrylic block if that's what you have. Since I've never used these stamps before, I like to wipe them first with a dry cloth. I find that my ink will transfer better on my first use if I do that first. I'm inking these with Altenew Frosty Pink Ink because that is the matching color to the marker that I use to color my flower. So I know that this will be a perfect match and I don't have to experiment and figure out which ink will match my colored image. I use the Frosty Pink marker on my flower and now I'm using the frosty pink ink and that is a huge time saver for me. I'll continue to stamp those marble images to create kind of a tile look on the background. But I really wanted to make that tile look stand out more. So I have my score buddy and a bone folder and I'm going to score right along the side of the stamp images and this will give a little bit more of that tile look. So I'm lining it up on my scoring tool. I'll run my line right along next to each of those stamped images. So basically, I'm outlining the stamped squares with a scored line. And when I hold this up to the camera, you'll be able to see that those score lines just simply give a little bit of dimension and it really adds a lot to the background of this. I thought it would be fun to add my flower in a vase, so I'm using the new Altenew Versatile Vase stamp set, and I'll use this again later in this video. In the guide that comes with the stamp set, you can see different ideas for using it. And keep in mind, there are coordinating dies available, and also the coordinating masking stencil set, which I think is really fun to have with these vases. I stamped and die cut the smallest vase and added a little bit of color to it with my Altenew Artist Markers. I then stamped two stems into the vase and those stems are from the wallpaper flower stamp set that I used to create the flower and leaves. I'm arranging this all together on a four and a quarter by five and a half inch pink note card that matches the color flower that we created. For a sentiment, I used the new Altenew Thank You Builder stamp set. This is a really clever set. It has many different thank words and many different you words. And you can mix and match to create different styles every time and to find what fits perfectly onto your card. Here's the guide that comes with it that shows a few different creative uses for the stamp set. I decided to take two different style thank and you words and use them together on this card. And I'll use another option later in this video. So here's a closer look at the final card. You can see in the background that tile look that we get by adding those scoring lines between our marble stamped images. You can also see the great color blending that you can get with these artist markers. Because the four colors come together, I knew which worked together. And even though I'm not great at coloring, it really does make it a lot easier. 
Before we move on to the next example, I wanted to mention that I stamped on mo most of my matching envelopes today using this new Altenew stamp set. I thought that thank you so much sentiment was beautiful and fit perfectly on an envelope flap. Okay, now it's time to do a completely different example. And in this one, I'm going to use the artist markers just to add details to a card. I'm using the Altenew Bold Bunch stamp set. I really like the fun, whimsical look of this stamp set, along with the sentiment that's included. These are very simple, bold layering images, super easy to figure out, and I'll add some extra detail to them today. Here's a look at the guide that comes along with the stamp set for a few different card ideas. I'm using my Misty stamping tool to share with you a fun technique. This is a very easy way to cover a card with images. It'll look symmetrical and everything will be towards the top center of the card. So I position my first flower, the largest one, and I use my cloth to kind of wipe it off before I applied my ink. This is one of the new Altenew ink colors that I showed you earlier. Now I rotated my paper and I'm putting it back in my Misty but I'm not putting it all the way to the top of the Misty. I want to figure out a position where I want this flower to be. So I'm just moving the paper until I'm happy with the position and I'm putting a piece of tape up there at the top just so I know where to line up the edge of my cardstock each time I stamp. So now I'm stamping the same image it's in the image is in the same spot of my Misty once again with the same color ink. So now I'm going to repeat this with another flower. So I have my cardstock in the bottom corner as I originally had it. I'm positioning the next largest flower and I'll stamp this with the new Altenew Sunray, which is from one of the color families that gives like a tangerine orange color. Okay, so then I rotated my paper, lined it up with that tape on the top and stamped again. So you'll see how I'm creating two bundles of flowers that'll look nicely with the sentiment in the middle towards the top of the card. This time I'm using the new green ink color called Lime, which is the perfect green color. And I'm stamping one of the leaf images from the set. Before I stamp more flowers, I want to stamp my sentiment because I wanna make sure that I leave enough room in the middle without any dark stamping in the way so that it stands out nicely. So I stamped that with black ink and now we can continue to add some more flowers around it. All of the colors of ink that I used on this card are the new colors of Altenew ink that I showed you earlier in this video. So each time I stamp it once, rotate the paper, line up the edge with that tape on the top and stamp it again. Now I'm stamping the layering images on top of the flowers. So you can see I'm starting with the largest flower and stamping, stamping the second area with the darker ink color. These are super easy to line up because they are designed to have that bold look to them. This is one of those card designs where I recommend making several cards at once. Since you have your stamping tool and stamps set up already, you might as well make a bunch and I regret that I didn't, but keep that in mind if you try this technique. Okay, so now that I've done all of my stamping, I thought it would be fun to add some details with my Altenew Artist Markers. Now there aren't markers available yet that perfectly match the inks that I used. However, there are markers that come close. I found the colors that were closest and I'm adding very simple details. I'm not doing any kind of blending here. I'm just adding some dark er darker areas here and there. On the leaves, I drew a line down the center and also added darker color to the stem. For the lightest color leaves, I use the tip to tip technique to get the perfect color to complement the light green ink that I used for the stamping. On the flowers, I just added some darker color lines here and there. And on the little berries, I just added a darker little dot on each. You could do this with many different markers you have, but the advantage of these is that they have that nice fine tip that allows you to get into those small areas and you can definitely use inks and markers that go together well. Once I added my quick details, I trimmed that piece down to be about five and a quarter by four inches, and I added it onto a black four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. So looking close, you can see how those details added a lot to the simple stamping. My next example shows the simplest way to use alcohol-based markers on your card. I use the new Altenew Book Club stamp set, this is great if you have any book lovers in your life. 
you can make bookmarks or book stickers for them to add to their books. However, I decided to use that image as a focal point on a card. By the way, whenever you are coloring with the Altenew artist markers, you need to use an alcohol marker friendly paper and ink so that you don't have any bleeding issues. I use Gina K Amalgam Black Ink, which I'll link to below, and I use Nina White cardstock. Those work really well with these markers. Now this time when I'm coloring, I'm only using one color marker per image, so I'm not doing any blending. I'm going for solid coloring. That's one of the advantages of using an alcohol-based marker, is that you don't see scribble lines. Remember when you would use Crayolas as a kid and you'd color a large area with one color? You would see those back and forth lines? Well, when you use alcohol-based markers, you don't have to worry about that. You get a nice solid look. So sometimes I think it's fun to color very quickly and get that solid look like I'm doing with this example here. After I colored, I used the coordinating die to cut it out, and now I'm adding it to the center of a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. I'm also using the same image to stamp some floral along the left and right of my card. I'm stamping this with Altenew Mountain Mist ink, which happens to be a perfect match to the marker color that I use to color in my images. So this is one of those cases where I didn't have to search for a matching color. I know my stamping in the background will perfectly match the coloring I did in the center. I'm also using that matching marker to add little dots to the background just for some fun details. I stamp thank you from that thank you stamp set that I showed you earlier with the matching Lagoon Altenew ink. So I can be sure all my colors match and it really makes pulling a card together much quicker. So here on the final card, you can see the smooth and solid results that we got by coloring with the alcohol-based markers. I think this is a fun alternative to doing a really complex blending color. You can get this solid look very quickly and it gives a more contemporary look. Okay, I have two more examples for you. These actually use the same stamp set, but I changed things up between the two so that I could get a completely different look. The stamp set that I used is this one from Altenew and it creates kind of a ball of flowers that's just beautiful. Now notice it has an outline image and then the solid layering images to add the color. This particular technique works great for any stamp set that has both, both the outline and the layering. Many Altenew stamp sets have this, so I thought this would be a perfect example to share. Now on some alcohol marker friendly cardstock, I am stamping my outline image first, and I'm stamping that with black ink. You'll see this is beautiful as is. You could just go ahead and color this or watercolor this if you want to. But remember, there are layering stamps included in the set that will allow you to quickly color these. And by the way, I'm stamping each twice. Since I have it out, I might as well make multiple examples. Okay, after I've stamped that, I'm taking the first layer image. This is the one with the most solid area to it. And I'm lining it up with that outline image. It lines up very easily, but there is a guide included with the stamp set if that's helpful. I'm stamping this layer with Altenew Buttercream ink, which is my favorite light yellow ink. I'll then rotate it and stamp it again. And you'll see how already it looks like I spent time coloring in those flowers, but I just simply stamped them. Before I change my stamps, I'm going to stamp the solid layer onto another piece of cardstock, and I'll do it twice. So what will happen on this piece is we'll build up the layers of the flowers together without the outline image around it. So we'll end up with two very different looks. And I ended up doing a bunch of these. I did these in a bunch of different colors. I'll save them for future cards, but while you have your stamps out, you might as well do so. Okay, so let's go back to the outline image, and we're going to go for the second layer of the, of the flowers. And this one I'll stamp in a slightly darker yellow. This adds some of the darker yellow detail to the flower. And I will stamp that on both of those images. And then I will switch to that piece that doesn't have the outline stamping. And watch, it's like magic. As soon as you stamp the second layer, you see those flowers come to life. They start to form, and you can tell what they are. Okay, now it's time to stamp in the other flowers in this image. So I'm starting by stamping onto the outline images. 
After I've stamped on those, I can switch to my non-outline images and you'll see the flowers start to form. For the second layer, I use a slightly darker ink. So this is the crimson ink and I'll stamp that onto the no line pieces too. And then finally, we come in with the leaves themselves. There's only one layer to this, but that's okay. We can add our own details to it with our markers once we're done. The set does include a few tiny little stamps to fill in some of the little details at the center of flowers, but I decided to skip those stamps and instead add the details with my markers just to save time. Let's start with the outline images first. On this one, I just wanted to add a little bit more dark color towards the center of our leaves and our flowers. I totally could skip this, but I did choose light yellow and light peach colored inks. So my image is very light. By going in with my matching artist markers because they match the inks, I can add a little bit of a darker color just so it pops a bit more. Doesn't take much time at all. And thanks to the detail in the stamping, I don't have to blend. I can just quickly add color. And in this case, I'm using the fine tip of my markers to get into those small areas. Once I was done, I used the coordinating die to cut the cluster of flowers out. And I also created a little vase to put them in using that vase stamp set that I showed you earlier. And yes, I hand drew the little stems in there. Super easy to do. I stamped a sentiment on it from the older Altenew leaf medallion stamp set. I wanted to keep that simple and I added the piece onto a light gray note card. So here you can see how quick it was to pull together that stamped image and add a little bit of detail with the markers. So now let's do something with the other flower cluster that we created that does not have the outline. In this case, I added a lot more detail with my artist markers. I used a different flower cluster. This one had pink flowers and bright yellow flowers. And I'm going in and adding those like flecked or feathered lines using the fine tip of the marker. You can see how this really brings this image to life. I'm not good at doing no line coloring. Some people are good at that. This is a great way to totally fake it because I started with the stamping and I'm just adding simple details with the markers. So keep that in mind. If you have a layering stamp set that does include the outline image, you can create this look by skipping the outline, just doing the layering images together, and then adding details with a marker. I again used a vase along with that and a simple sentiment underneath. Keep in mind that the techniques and tips that I use today could be used with most any alcohol-based markers. I focused on the Altenew Artist markers because they're an affordable option and they seem to really be easy to use for crafters like me. I think because the line was created by a stamping company, they kept things in mind that would be helpful to us, such as matching inks and color families. If you're interested in any of the products that I used, they are linked below in my YouTube description. In the middle are a couple other videos you might like. I appreciate you stopping by. I will be back with another video soon and have a wonderful week.